Okay, so the topic that we are going to be studying or looking into today is density. And density is um, a topic that we have already, um, we have studied the requisites of this um, topic before, which are basically maths and volume and weight. So these concepts are going to be uh, used in this topic majorly. Before we get into the uh, description or the main definition of what density is or what the formula basically stands for, um, I need you to give uh, I need to give you a perspective of what exactly it is. So when we look at some things, two things that are lying there, uh, lying at some place, let's just say it's a ball, it's a tennis ball and the other thing is a box. And the box is made up of wood, a very light wood. So using our eyes, what we can judge is its volume. I can say that the box is definitely bigger than the tennis ball. Uh, in this hypothetical scenario, we just imagine a huge box. So I can tell the size. I can talk about the size by just the look of it. However, one thing that we majorly misjudge most of the times is mass. It's not necessary that if an object is huge or if it's bigger in size, it's going to have bigger mass or higher mass. So the, the concept of density comes in here that not all big objects are not all objects that have huge volume they they have you know the higher mass how even in a lot of cases when you have similar volumes same uh, sorry same volumes of two boxes or two objects their masses is not their masses are not going to be the same and the reason is that because of density so however we can only guess its mass we may guess incorrectly because uh, we misjudge density. Now, what exactly is density? Density is basically a material property and it is not a prop uh, property that is dependent on the shape or the size. It is dependent on the material. So, iron has its own density, wood has its own density, copper has its own density, every material has its own density. So, the point is that Density is basically the mass of an object per unit volume. That if we if we are taking two objects of same volume, which object is going to have higher mass? If the volumes are same and one object A, let's just say, has higher mass, then we know that the density of that, that object is higher. That that object is denser than the object B or the other object. So... The mass of an object is the amount of matter it is made up of. Mass is measured in kilograms. But however, density is a property of material. We have already discussed that. It tells us how concentrated its mass is. So by this sentence, sentence it basically means how much mass does it have per unit volume. So that means, so you know, the word concentrated is, is basically saying that how much mass how much heavy it is if it if we just take one unit volume of that object or that material whatever shape it is it doesn't matter because again density is a property of material uh, well this is the main formula of density and we are going to use that uh, over here d has been um, denoted as density but in further chapters we will be using another symbol called rho that will be denoting density so, in everyday terms, we may refer that lead is heavier than wood, that honey is heavier than water. By that, we mean that given equal volumes of lead and wood, lead will be heavier than wood. So, we have these concepts, so we have this common sense in our head that lead is heavier than wood, or that steel is heavier than plastic, or that, um, or, or, or that iron is heavier than wood. Why do we have these things in our mind when we are we don't even know what volume we are talking about? If let's just say it can be a small clip of steel and it can be a whole bed of uh, wood, then obviously bed will be heavier. But this this concept or this common sense uh, that says us to us uh, that uh, this to us that lead is heavier than wood is that provided we take equal volumes of these materials or these um, objects, then then lead will be heavier. So this is basically the concept behind it. And heavier, you know, the 
image or in image or idea of some material in your head that basically means that it is denser so which in scientific terms means that lead is denser than wood as i already said okay so this is the formula and we've already discussed that mass per unit volume now we are going to talk about uh, these uh, tables and they're very important the first table is basically that of units that we are going to use for density so density is equal to mass divided by volume right so this first column basically tells uh, units of masses kilograms 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 and then the next column tells unit of volume meter cube one liter uh, decimeter cube centimeter cube and then what will be the unit of density well obviously as the formula says density is equal to mass divided by volume we know that we if we divide the mass unit divided by volume unit we are going to get the density units so the density unit is basically kilograms per cubic meter if we have um wait let me take out this pen if we have these you know and we're talking about this first row so this is going to be the unit of density now why is it, why is there this these values of density of water that's because the some of the values of density because density is a constant it is a property of material we will have to remember them they will be most most of the times available in exam however it is so much more convenient to uh, just remember uh, number and that will also save a lot of time so in the si units that are kilogram per meter cube for density the value is thousand kilogram per meter cube um i have highlighted the other these um materials or these um I mean, these materials, obviously, gases and liquids, and these are, you know, some of the values that will be uh, used in our further chapters, especially that of water and that of mercury. So, now, another question that arises, and that will be and is applicable in a lot of, in basically all of the units in IGCSE physics, is why is density of water 1000 over here, and why is it one kilograms per liter over here or one kilograms per decimeter cube over here well the reason is that we have to make sure that the units are uniform so over here they're talking about over here they're talking about kilograms per meter cube however over here they're talking about kilograms per decimeter cube so let's just do this simple calculation right here thousand kilograms per meter cube okay. now how much kilograms per um, decimeter cube is it gonna be well a thousand kilograms is equal to thousand kilograms that is simple I'm gonna just I'm sorry that's a little wonky but Okay, thousand kilograms. This is thousand kilograms. I'm sorry. Um, is equal to thousand kilograms. What about one meter cube, right? Because there is one over here. How many, um, how many decimeter cubes are equal to one meter cube? Well, before getting the cube situation or the volume dimensions, you know, because volume is a three dimensional quantity. Let's just talk about one dimensional quantity. How many decimeters are there in one meter? Well, as deci means ten, and it is a tenth part of a meter. Well, then we know that. 10 decimeters is equal to 1 meter now meter cube since it's a three-dimensional quantity and we are taking the volume so I'm just going to take this cube of this so this becomes thousand this is already thousand they both cut and then we get one kilograms per deci meter cube okay so this is basically it about that um okay another thing to be a uh, note uh, to note is that gases liquids solids if you look at this trend then you can see simply that uh, we are going to discuss that further too but uh, the gases have lower density and then liquids are slightly higher and then solids are even higher than that now another uh, concept that is very much related to density obviously is that if an object will float or is it going to sink when it is introduced or immersed in a medium
So the thing is that density is basically the key to flirting. Density is basically the key that tells us if something is going to float or is it going to sink. So if an object is denser than the medium it is immersed into, then the object sinks. Let's just say we just clear it up. We're talking about the object that we're talking about is iron and the medium that we're talking about is water. And I have this clip that is made up of iron and the medium is water and I have a bucket of water. If I throw that clip in, of uh, iron into water, it's definitely gonna sink. So that is because its density is higher than that of water. However, if an object is less dense than medium it is immersed into, then it floats. So in this case, it says that, let's just say we imagine a cork or something, a wooden block, a very light wooden block. Well, in that case, it is going to float at the top. Now, it's very exciting to know that sometimes we misjudge things on base of their mass or on base of their size. That you can imagine that um, a pin, a safety pin, or a needle, even a needle, needle is going to sink in water. However, even a huge block of wood is going to float at top of it. So the, the, the main key is not weight, it's not mass, it's definitely density. So that is something that you need to, you know, keep a hold of. And that's about it. In the next part, I'll be explaining the other things.